First, what are igneous rocks? Any rock that was formed from molten rock, magma or lava, is an igneous rock. These are split up into plutonic and volcanic. The Earth is big, and it has a small crust, just 35 kilometers thick. And it's not soil. Most of it is rock. In fact, igneous rocks make up 88% of the Earth's crust. Sedimentary and metamorphic rocks make up the remaining 12. However, this is reversed closer to the surface. Anywhere less than 2 kilometers down, sedimentary rocks account for 88% of the rock, and in some cases, a lot more. Of that 88%, all of the igneous rocks, most of them are plutonic, not erupted above the ground with a volcano, but instead forced into the Earth's crust as intrusions. Volcanic rocks are those that are erupted. So, we know that there are a lot of igneous rocks, but how are they classified? Igneous rocks can be accurately identified by analysing the chemical makeup and comparing to internationally agreed specifications to classify them. This, however, isn't realistic in the field, so an older system is still in common use. Just by eye, you can determine the average crystal size, excluding any phenocrysts. This information can be used to class into three groups, fine, medium, and coarse. These groups are less than 1mm, 1 to 5 millimetres, and more than 5 millimetres, respectively. Of course, if you can't see the individual grains, it's classed as fine. Crystal grain size is often the first thing used to identify a rock. It's quick and can be very accurate. Comparing the rock to a series of diagrams makes this even easier. The average crystal grain size indicates how fast the magma cooled. The larger the crystal, the longer it took to solidify, as the crystals had more time to grow and the cooling speed will often suggest where it was when it cooled. Small grains indicate rapid cooling in contact with air or water. Medium suggests a minor intrusion such as a silt, and coarse grains are likely to occur in the centre of a major intrusion like a pluton. Just classifying by grain size doesn't really say much, so another classification is also used. By identifying the amount of silicon dioxide, or the silica content, we can group into four types, silicic, intermediate, mafic, and ultramafic. While it seems like it would be quite hard to determine this in the field, it is relatively easy to get a rough indication, simply from the visible minerals and the overall colour, also known as the aspect. Mostly formed at convergent plate boundaries, silicic rocks will contain minerals with lots of silicon dioxide, such as quarks and the micas. It will be between 66 and 75% silica. Granite is a silicic rock, and is normally found deep in the crust due to the viscosity of silicic magmas, a similar consistency to toothpaste. Being a silicic rock, granite has a leucocratic aspect. Intermediate is the next group. Rocks in this group contain between 52 and 66% silica. The most common rock in this group is andesite, a fine-grained volcanic rock. Also common at convergent plate boundaries, it's named after the Andes, the magma solidifies at a higher temperature than silicic magmas. Intermediate rocks contain similar minerals to the silicic rocks, but have little or no quartz. Instead, they contain mafic minerals like hornblende and augite. These minerals give them a mesocratic aspect. Mafic rocks are immediately identifiable by their colour. Lots of magnesium oxide and iron oxide, rust, is present, giving a melanocratic aspect. They do not contain quartz due to the lack of silica, just 45 to 52 percent. However, they do contain orgite and sometimes olivine. Basalt is a common mafic rock. This graph helps visualize the relative amounts of each mineral in the rock types. Note how there is no quartz or potassium feldspar in the mafic rocks, and very few mafic minerals in the silicic rocks. Ultramafic is the fourth group, containing less than 45 percent silica. These rocks are mostly magnesium and iron oxide. These rocks have such high melting points that there is no ultramafic magma on Earth at the current time. However, in the Precambrian Eon, ultramafic magmas were present, as the Earth was hotter. We know this because ultramafic rocks, mainly peridotite, are still brought up from the mantle by volcanoes. Igneous textures also provide a lot of information about how a rock formed. There are a record of the cooling history. There are four main textures. 
equigranular, porphyritic, flow-banded, and vesicular or amygdaloidal. Equigranular simply means that all of the grains are the same size. They can be any of fine, medium and coarse, so long as all of the grains are the same. Each of the categories suggests something about the formation of the rock. Fine means the magma was extruded onto the surface, and it's a volcanic rock. Medium suggests a shallow, hyperbasal intrusion just below the surface, and coarse indicates a large intrusion, forming plutonic rocks. Porphyritic is the opposite of equigranular. This means that not all of the magma solidified at the same time. In the magma chamber, minerals with higher melting points solidify out of the melt and form large, coarse-grained crystals. Then, the surrounding ground mass is normally fine-grained, having been extruded as a lava flow. This is called a two-stage cooling history. The phenocrysts can sometimes be aligned in the direction of the lava flow, which gives even more information. Flow banding is alternating layers of light and dark minerals. It only occurs in silicic lava flows as the minerals separate, and so is almost always found in rhyolite. Finally, a vesicular texture is when gas bubbles are trapped in magma. As pressure is released and it cools, these expand up to 22 times. Vesicles are normally only found in basalt or pumice, as the magma has to be non-viscous. When mineral-rich water flows through these rocks, crystals can start to grow, normally quartz or calcite. When the crystal fills the vesicle, it is known as an amygdale. If these become large, it's called a geode. Geodes can be anywhere from 5 cm to half a metre across. It all depends on how long it took to form. This video has mostly just explained what igneous rocks are, the basic features, and how to classify them. Part 2 will compare volcanic and plutonic, and explain intrusions and lava flows in more detail. Click here to subscribe so you don't miss it.